Good morning everybody from beautiful British Columbia. We are headed east. We slept in Sycamus, British Columbia this last night and we've just started rolling. Got going a little later than I had planned on originally, but we have a lot of time to get there. A little bit, a little bit extra, not a lot, but a little bit of extra time. So I'm trying an, ex an experiment this trip. I would have liked to have gone home this weekend, but I didn't have quite enough time to get home for a night. I wouldn't have been able to make it, but if I go straight to Wisconsin where this lumber is, is going to that I have on my trailer, it gives me a little bit of extra wiggle room to play with to get there, so I went with this. And the experiment I'm trying is I'm trying to save fuel. I was talking about it the other day that the best way to save fuel is to not, or, or the, the best way to save money is to not spend it in the first place. It's a well-known fact that if you slow your truck down, you use less fuel. And my old roommate was one that would always drive around 55 miles an hour everywhere he goes, 90 kilometers an hour. Drove me nuts at the time, but he had a point. He saved a lot of money in fuel. And I didn't fight him on that. that that's the truth. I was just always in a hurry. But since we have some extra time this trip, I want to try his theory. From what I've gathered over the last day or so, I can save about five liters per hundred kilometers just slowing down to 55 miles an hour. I know it's a pain, but that's $60 a day, approximately. That can add up to a $900 to $1,000 a month, depending on how much you drive. Of just money sitting in your account that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So you gotta put a little bit more time in, but you also get more money back at the end of the month, right? It's an experiment I'm trying right now. Now, now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be a jerk about it on the roads. I'm not going to be that driver holding up traffic on the two-lane roads. That drives me nuts. Now, on the two-lane roads, the speed limit's 100 kilometers an hour. And if I see someone's behind me, I'll do the speed limit. But if there's no one behind me, like right now, I'm gonna slow her down to 90 kilometers an hour. Just 10 under the limit. I wouldn't go much much slower than that. You don't want to go too slow on the highway or that could cause a danger for people, for people coming up behind you too. But I'm paying attention to behind me and if anyone comes up behind me, I'll, I'll, I'll move my speed up to the speed limit, which is 100 kilometers an hour. Now once I'm on the four lane highway and people can easily get around me and there's not a lot of traffic, I'm not being a pain on the road. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it this trip. I have the time to do it. And we'll see how much money we save and what our fuel economy is. If my calculations are correct, if I were to do this for a month, that should save me approximately $900 in fuel. Just sitting there in my bank account, $900 that can go towards truck maintenance, that can go towards our home maintenance, our roof that needs to be replaced. It can go maybe two date nights. It can go anywhere I want it to go to. That's the great thing about it. It's money that, you know, otherwise wouldn't have been there. There's some trips where you just, you, you gotta get there as quickly as possible. But let's see what happens. We got the next three days of driving. I wanna see, I wanna see if, if I can save some money.
called in the, the closed scale on the east side of Calgary here. I was parked all the way over there all by myself. Remember where that truck is? I parked all the way there all by myself with there, there's a big grass area on the other side of them there. And just as I was about to let Chevy out, this guy has this, who has this whole entire lot here where he could have parked, could have parked anywhere in this whole open area, came and decided to park right beside me. Like literally right beside me, mirrors almost touching. So now I gotta come all the way over here and walk Chevy here because I wanted to let him off leash a little bit and let him stretch his legs. And if there's someone right there, well, he's gonna be all distracted and wanna go say hi. So, some people, they just flock to like other people. They can't be alone ever, you know? Like they, they have to be beside somebody at all times. I don't know. Okay, bud, come on. Stretch your legs, bud. Come on, go a little further than that. Come on, go have fun. Go, go on, go on, go, go. Chevy, hey, that way. There you go, good boy. Go explore a little bit. There's a fence over there. He won't go too far. He's our, our best boy. I can trust him off leash. He comes very well and listens very well. Listens better than Diesel, actually. Definitely listens to me better than Frank. Frank only listens to Brit. I am no authority in that little wiener dog's mind. Absolutely not. But Chevy, he's a good boy. Hey bud, why don't you run a little bit? Actually, maybe not. Maybe there's some barbed wire fencing that needs to be taken down. Ugh. At least he's in a safe area there right now. He's fine. We're here in Red Cliff, Alberta. Just on the other side of the valley from Medicine Hat, Alberta. I'm gonna spend the night here. They have that new Flying J down the road, but their internet hasn't been up and running yet. I don't know why they haven't got their Wi-Fi up and running, but I'm gonna go to the, the Petro Pass here, and hopefully their internet works. It's always a little bit slower than Flying J's, but at least it exists. I can have a shower here too, I believe. Let's see if we can even find a spot. It's already like 11.30 at night. Uh, we might not even find a, a parking spot here. It's the constant struggle of being a truck driver. Finding parking. Especially when you're, you're like me and you like to drive late and uh, sleep longer. That's my own fault. I did this to myself. Here we are, it's just on the right. Oh, there's lots of parking! What? No way! No way! Why is there so much parking? Where is everybody? Is there something wrong? Oh, yeah! Vunaba! Oh, and my spot is even available. Oh! Right on! Fantastic! I'm excited. I was not expecting this. What day is it today? Oh, today I'm filming this, it's Friday. Everybody's at home with their families. And I'm one of the schmucks that has, has to work through the weekend. I get it, okay, okay. Must be nice. Now check this out. Here's the building right here. I'm gonna go in here and grab a shower right away, but off to my left here, there's one lane that you can't see. It's like, six spots available. All these spots over here are available. I'm blown away. During the week, this is packed at this time already. Everyone's parking all over the place. Nice truck here. Look at that. Very nice. Nice Pete. I like your Peter. Very nice. Very nice. I'm excited. Okay. I'm gonna park back here. something else on there. This isn't the actual lens I'm touching. Don't worry, it's just like a plastic cover. <sighs> I can replace it. Better? Can you guys see me? All right, Chevy. We're here. End of our day. End of the line for today. I have 1,888 kilometers left to go to our destination. So about two days worth of driving. Uh, slowing down today and going 55 miles an hour was actually very relaxing. And I didn't really feel like I was going slower, but I was also paying very close attention to my fuel economy. And I saved almost 10 liters per 100 kilometers to my average 
of that stretch of highway. And usually I'm doing about between 100 and 105 kilometers an hour, or like 60 to 65 miles an hour, slowing down to 55, saved me almost 10 liters per 100 kilometers, which is more than 60 bucks a day, I think. Let's see, let's see, okay. I know to the Americans, are like, what did he say? What, what, what about liters? What's he talking about? Is he talking French? Those those Canadians and their French. I know. Uh, okay, so I fueled up for a dollar twenty nine nine here in Alberta. That's the diesel price per liter. So ten liters per hundred kilometers. So ten liters would equal. I shouldn't have to do this on the calculator, but twelve ninety nine. So thirteen dollars every hundred kilometers. I drove. How many kilometers did I drive today? I think about nine hundred. Right. One sec. Just let my system boot up here a little bit come on come on there 806 kilometers let's round that to 800 even so 13 dollars per 100 kilometers you go 13 times 8 right i saved 104 dollars today in one day just slowing down. Now that's on the high end at 10 liters per 100 kilometers. Let's say I overestimated a little bit. I know for a fact that I saved more than five liters per 100 kilometers. So let's say five liters, let's, on the low end, five. That's $6.50 every 100 kilometers. 800 kilometers times, you know, eight, because 800, eight times, what did I say? 650, $52. So even at the low end of my estimate, which I know I did better than, I saved $52 in one day, just slowing down. And slowing down is free. I didn't even have to invest anything into something to get that return back. All I had to do was lift my foot a little bit. Now the downside to that, the con to that is that it takes me longer to get places. So I'm in Medicine Hat right now, drove 800 kilometers. If I was doing 65 miles an hour, I probably could have made it to maybe Swift Current and gone over a thousand kilometers in the same amount of time. But remember, on my low end estimate, I would have been spending 650 more per 100 kilometers. Let's say I made it an extra 200 kilometers times 650 per 100 kilometers, right? Times 200. So if I had gone a thousand kilometers, I would have been spending six dollars and fifty cents at least more per hundred kilometers so just to get here 6.5 times eight would have spent fifty two dollars more plus another thirteen dollars for the extra 200 kilometers right are you guys following are you following it would have cost me an extra 65 dollars and i would have been two hours ahead right now but i'd be 65 dollars behind so what's more important to you time or money. It all depends on the freight, it all depends on your deadline, and if you have the time to save the money. If you have the time to save the money, why not? If you can afford to, $65. Let's say you drive five days out of the week, times five. That's $325 extra a week. Times four weeks in a month, $1,300 a month. Extra that I would be spending but maybe I would have gotten further. Maybe I could have gotten an extra load in to pay for that. It's, it's give and take. You know, you can make an argument either way. So I say $52 today. Let's say I drive 20 days in a month. I, I drive more than that. 20 days in a month. <coughs> I am saving at least $1,040 a month. And plus I got my bunk heater now too, right? So I don't have to idle my truck. I was spending, what, $1,000 idling my truck every all night, every night through the cold winter season? I don't have to idle anymore. That's gonna save me, let's say if I was spending 1000 I still have to idle a little bit, you know, warm up the truck in the mornings and stuff. So let's say we bring our idle time down from, what was I, I was at like 60% down to, even in half, it should be less than that. Even less than half. So let's say we save $700. What is this? Amber alert. One second. Alberta emergency alert. Amber alert updated by Edmonton Police Service on March 15th, 11.37 huh? p.m. What's going on? This alert is in effect for Alberta. 
For complete information go to www.albertemergencyalert.ca slash mobile and listen to local media. Critical alert update. Oh, what's going on? Oh! Do not approach the suspect. Please call Edmonton Police if you have any information. Oh, there was a child abducted today. Waver. Oh, boy. Oh, that's so sad. I'm not in the Edmonton area at all. I'm not even close, so I can't really help, but I can keep an eye out if they come this way. That's so sad. Oh, man. Amber Alert. Okay, back to what we were talking about, though. I, I can't help in that situation anyways. I'm a far, I'm a long ways away from Edmonton. I'm hours and hours away. I don't know why I got the Amber Alert. I guess it just goes across the whole province. But we were, we were saying that we're saving $1,000.40 just from going slower. And let's say we can save $700 a month just not idling as much. Let's take a low estimate, $500. You know, plus the $500 we're saving from... from uh, not idling that's over fifteen hundred dollars a month that i get to keep that comes into my wallet that's pretty cool that's pretty cool that's money i made that i didn't even have to really work any harder for what do you guys have for fuel economy tips how do you save fuel and save costs on the road let me know down below in the in the comment section what do you do to cut costs and make the absolute most while trucking. I'm gonna end it there. Chevy's getting very restless back there. Chevy, hey, vlog in here, buddy. Hey, very restless. <laughs> I know what he wants. He wants to go somewhere that rhymes with, uh, doubt died. Doubt died, doubt, doubt, doubt. I think he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I better take him out. Okay, enough talking. We'll see you tomorrow for another video.